Welcome back to Switch Corner and today it's a special video. Not only do we get to take a look at Ori and the Will of the Wisps, the sequel to what has to be now one of my favourite games of this generation, but it's also the channel's 200th review and I can't think of a game I'd rather spend that time with. Now does it live up to the incredible heights set by the first game or is this a sequel, you know, where things just slightly head downhill. Well hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here, join our growing family. Thank you all for the support you've shown the channel over this last 12 months, it really means a lot to me and yeah, let's get started. So Ari and the Will of the Wisps story, I don't want to give too much away, so let's focus just on the opening, you know, the setup. Here, Ari has basically become a parent figure of sorts to an owl by the name of Ku. Now in these moments, you'll get to watch, you know, Ku's like childhood and growth alongside you. You'll face basically the highs and lows. And in typical fashion, with for an Ari game, they're in stunning cutscenes that without words present the emotional highs and lows. Now one particular challenge that comes up, the inability but desire to fly. Now naturally, like any good friend, you are there and you help Ku out. Life is good though, but naturally being an Ari game, things go horribly wrong when Ku is taken from you and you must now set out to save your friend. While it might sound kind of like light stuff, I challenge anyone to play this game and not only find themselves emotionally infested in these characters and the world, but find that beneath the surface it has a ton of messages and some real honestly like tear jerker moments. The pacing is incredible, the presentation of often wordless scenes just masterful and up there with some of the best. And this world will drive you with its story to not only want to beat the game, but explore every single inch of it from fear you might miss out on one of these small moments. Incredible stuff and it definitely matches the levels the first game showed us when they first introduced these characters. So gameplay on Ari and the Will of the Wisps is very much a traditional metroidvania meaning you'll have basically a huge map and your goal to really move things along is explore this world and then find whatever you need to progress things along. This could be let's say a key to a locked doorway or a new skill that opens up previously like unreachable locations. I'm going to put it on the table now not only does it take what you knew from the first game and then like improve upon it but literally add a huge amount of these new skills that feel like just perfect extensions to the formula. The control here are, I just can't fault them, the fluidity of which Ari moves in animation is just matched by controls that seem to flow along with the character. Starting simple, you'll basically be able to run, attack and jump, you know, that core level. But soon you'll find yourself not only unlocking new abilities from like these trees scattered around the world, but upgrading them too. Think like souped up attacks, the ability to double jump a bow and arrow, a dash mechanic where if you connect with an enemy, you can actually like fire yourself off them. Some of these natural growth, but for the most part, they'll be assigned by you to match what you need at that specific moment thanks to like an inventory kind of system where you assign skills. My favourite was a walkling manoeuvre meaning I could literally climb the walls and ceiling around me. Got it pretty early in the game but it rarely left my skill set. These controls though let's be fair would mean nothing if the world around you wasn't designed to kind of obviously fit their need but talk about nailing the delivery there. This map like most Metroidvania is huge but it's the creativity that it led to that was just so impressive like frequently I'd find myself reflecting on a particularly tough moment and just thinking to myself did I really just land multiple jumps use dash to never touch the floor take down a few enemies along the way while also actually avoiding a ton of obstacles. That is a good control system to me when they are so intuitive you don't even really need to think about it, it just kind of works. Likewise Ori's delivery in new skills is really where the genius is, it never breaks the setting for like tutorial moments, instead it gives you a little text box, explains them, but it expertly places you in moments where you will need to like immediately use them to progress, it tells you what you can now do and then gives you the opportunity to test it out, never feeling like the game is forcing it upon you but simply providing you with now a new option and relying on like your own curiosity to drive you to use it. There's one moment in particular against like the second bus, kind of at least, you're racing away from a wave almost and it will test every skill you've learnt so far and that was the moment I just kind of sat back in my seat and I was like yeah they've just absolutely like crushed this. It's all in the pacing from the somber moments of story to high intensity. They know exactly how to reward you as the player to make you always feel like you're making forward progression. Something that's very difficult to achieve in the metroidvania genre in general you know in so often you end up walking in circles 
I never really got that fatigue here and I think that's down to these like skills and movement. Definitely repeated areas, no doubt about that. But the first time I was walking, the second I was climbing, the third I was dashing through the sky. That ability that I can personally choose how I change things up just kept the game feeling extremely fresh. Gameplay wise then, the rest is relatively simple. You manage the health bar in the lower screen. You actually have a, what is essentially a stamina bar for your magic next to it. That's for your like your attacks and stuff. And then you can even collect shards in game, which you'll spend on upgrades and just unlocking like locations. It has a slight collector fun vibe at times, but it never really forces that on you. Likewise, the side quest to complete, which will be essential for progression in those higher difficulties. And then what are known as trials as well. These you basically get to race across the landscape with an opponent. I weren't sure about this idea initially and I ended up actually loving them thanks to how good the controls are. Just felt like a good excuse to show off my best moves. Finally then boss fights are more than not frequent, Ari captures a sense of they're always kind of lurking in the background so there's always that tension but when they do happen super rewarding. Wouldn't call them particularly challenging but it's fun to learn their patterns and then figure out that exploit that leads to you, well you know, keeping your life. Likewise enemies, not a huge count but what we do get extremely varied. The combat is as good as the movement though and with the slash ability, I think the easy comparison to make here, just think like Hollow Knight and you'll get a general idea of what you're getting here. It's not the most challenging of games and I think most will be able to get through it, especially thanks to multiple difficulty options. But I do urge everyone here to give it a go if the idea of like dying constantly, you know, puts you off. Spawn points here are frequent and you'll rarely be more than a few feet from where you died unless it's a boss moment that understandably, you know, throws you back to the beginning of the encounter. It's a first for the channel, but I'm actually struggling to think of really any complaints. Ari somehow even delivers on the dreaded swimming moments that I typically despise in video games. Frame rate can be a little bit wonky at times, I'll say that much, it's nearly always at 60 though, but we see the occasional fluctuation to maybe 55 on the heavy end, but that is rare. Now having played this originally on the Xbox One X as well, just no performance was never perfect, and if anything this is the best the game has ever felt. Exceptional work taking gameplay that I thought would be tough to, you know, top, and I expected kind of like a copycat but they actually managed it here. They've grown upon that formula and delivered in nearly every area. So graphically speaking, and this might be rare, you see me so positive, but it's stunning. There is no question that the art style not only brings a ton of variety to the table, but the port to the Switch is incredible. The image, yes, is a little bit softer than what you may find on the Xbox One X, which makes sense. It's outputting at 4K. But I gotta say, this is one of the best looking Switch games now to date. The world not only very intentional with its design, but it's at that level where the game explains a technique to you and you quickly visibly like recognize, oh, I can use it like right there. That's a hard thing to deliver in visual design, but I think it demonstrates the level of just like thought that was put into this world. With such a big map to explore as well, I've got to say I was impressed with the changes. They are so frequent, but it always made sense to the storyline. Yes, you might start in the forest you need to save, but before you know it, you'll be surrounded by fire pits underground, underwater. It never felt like they were changing things for the sake of it, but doing it at the pace that was very much intended. I was so impressed with the visuals. In fact, once I unlocked the ability to fast travel, I actually found myself going back to previous areas just so I could explore a tiny bit more. The final piece for graphics and the story moments. The story's great, but they wouldn't be half what they were if it weren't for the incredible, like, graphics that go along with it. Here they use movement for the most part to capture the highs and lows and rarely rely on any sort of dialogue. A stunning game that is incredible to play on the Switch but seeing it handheld then just to wrap things up, absolutely something else. If you're a Switch Lite player, if you're a handheld player, if you're a Duck player, looks great in every single way. Audio then and you guessed it, exceptional work again. I hate to sound like a broken record at this point but yeah, very little to honestly fault. The sound design's kind of minimal. Some environmental pieces, you know, attack, movement, but the big focus is really on the music and what music it is. This orchestral score is just another level. I'm talking like Hollywood levels. The highs, the lows, the emotion, it's all captured right here. While I do think it's no doubt like most scores seem best alongside, you know, the moment to moment gameplay, I can't deny I've listened to it more than a few times outside of the game. I picked up the final, you can listen to it on Spotify as well and you absolutely should check it out by the game or not listen to this music so overall Ari and the Will of the Wisps is near perfect and while it has the occasional hiccup on the frame rate front 
Full transparency as well, I actually had one moment I first like jumped into the water. The game froze on me for like two seconds before it kicked back in. These are minimal issues when you weigh them against just the moment to moment gameplay, the incredible story, and then the art and music design that they've put into this world. Ari for me is a world of new and returning characters that solidifies honestly that games can be art. And they, in my opinion, now at this point deserve to go down in video game history. Since their first inception in 2015, they have stuck with me. And I challenge anyone to go into this one and not find something incredibly unique and special. It doesn't break any new ground, let me be clear of that, but for the most part, what it does do, it does just so very well. Today I'm going to be giving Ari and the Wool and the Wisps the channel's first ever 10 out of 10. If you watch this channel regularly, you'll know how tough I can be on games and with my scores, so this is for sure a big occasion and honestly the best way I could imagine spending my 200th review for Switch Corner. I don't think any game can be perfect, I know there will be things you could potentially point out as issues. But you know what, this is about as close to perfection as they come and that is good enough for me. With that, thanks for watching, will you be adding this one to your collection? A big shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. Helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.